Hi, we're going to check out the OpenScope MZ today from DigiLent. Thank you very much, DigiLent, for uh, sending this one through. I didn't know they were going to do it, but it was a Kickstarter uh, project which uh, raised $107,000, I think, and they got uh, just over 1,000 backers, and I guess this is one of the uh, first production run. It's an open source professional open source instrumentation for everyone. So let's check it out. Now I have actually reviewed the Analog uh, Discovery before, which is an excellent little uh, unit and it's very popular and rightly uh, so in like, especially in like education uh, sectors and stuff like that. It's more high end than this one. This one is actually um, a two channel 12 bit, two megahertz bandwidth uh, oscilloscope front end. Um, so, well, just an ADC. There's no actual, I don't believe there's any actual analog uh, front end circuitry on there. Um, at 6.5 meg samples per second, so that's good. Um, that's good enough for the 2 megahertz uh, claimed bandwidth. And it's got one 1 megahertz uh, bandwidth, uh, 10 meg sample per second generator. And it's got 10 GPIO pins on it that uh, can be used as a 10 channel logic analyzer as well as output and just general purpose stuff. And uh, like the analog discovery, it's got a PSU in there, power supply, that can do uh, 50 milliamps at plus minus 4 volts. Um, I would have liked to have seen that go to 5, but, you know, meh, it, it is what it is. Obviously, they're taking the uh, 5 volts in from the USB and only giving uh, plus minus 4 volts out because they haven't uh, put any uh, boost or uh, SEPIC uh, converter in there or anything like that. And, of course, the differentiator is this one has Wi-Fi built into it uh, so that... You know, you can use it and couple it to your phone or whatnot if you're out in the field. Or if you want to put this on like a portable device and then monitor remotely, um, that could be good. You just power it from the thing that you're mounting it onto. So um, could be very handy. Anyway, uh, let's check it out, shall we? The OpenScope MZ. It is $89. And by the way, um, that is a good price compared to the Analog Discovery, which is $279. It's not cheap, the Analog Discovery. Uh, I'm not sure if they still have the educational discount for that, but uh, it is, you know, it's worth it because the software, the Waveform software is very good. They have new software for this called Waveforms Lite, which you'll no doubt check out. Ta-da! We have our, uh, just our um, probes, um, in quote mark, good for logic analyzer, not any good for any sort of, um, you know, oscilloscope type functionality. Hey, that's neat. Look at that. They've put a cutout in there just for the jumper. So, there you go. That's all we get. That's all she wrote. And there we go. That's a neat looking board. Don't mind that at all. Purple. <laughs> oh, and of course, the big thing about this, um, open scope, because it's supposedly open source, whereas the analog discovery is not open source. So we'll check that out uh, later. I don't see any uh, open source uh, logo on here at all. They're not using the uh, regular gear logo or my gear logo, which I highly recommend. I might have to link it in at the end of this, um, which is gaining some traction, by the way. Some people are starting to use that. So uh, we don't know the degree of openness. They're just calling it like open source. I don't know if it's full open source hardware or open source software or whatnot. We'll find out. And they uh, promote this as a, you know, a portable, you know, instrument, a uh, portable measurement instrument. But like, quite frankly, with just these sort of um, interface leads, it's not really very good as a scope. I mean, at least the analog discovery has the proper case around it, uh, and it's got the um, BNC expansion thing, so you can actually put regular probes on it and uh, stuff like that. I don't, there is a 3D printed case for this, which is kind of cool. I guess you can just download the files and 3D print your own case, but like, you know, I. But I don't know, with the 0.1 inch header interface and just the leads like this, I don't think it's hugely useful as a portable measurement tool. It's more like a bench type thing. So if you've got that, well, why not just use the analog discovery? Okay, well, this one's a bit cheaper. But if you're using, you know, if you're out in the field doing measurements and you're using the Wi-Fi or whatnot, then, well, you want to be able to probe stuff. And it's just... Anyway, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people will uh, find it useful, but let's take a look at some of the chips on here. Now, here's a change. They've actually gone for a PIC32 uh, MZ, reasonably powerful little 32-bit uh, uh, processor, but uh, why they've chosen that one, I don't know. Um, the Analog Discovery, of course, had 
uh, I think it was a Xilinx FPGA in it. Uh, probably some in, running some soft core uh, thing. We just don't know because it wasn't open uh, like this one. But anyway, they chose and pick. And curiously, check this out. Microchip as well for the... Um, that's a lot of pins on there. For the Wi-Fi module. I didn't know microchip were rolling their own Wi-Fi modules or whatnot, so they obviously maybe got a real good deal from uh, Microchip to do that, perhaps. Hmm. Anyway, so yes, they've changed the uh, platform completely, so obviously it's not... Um, well, it might could be built on some of the same code, I guess, as the Analog uh, Discovery, but um, I, yeah, it's just like a different architecture. So maybe you can reuse some routines, but yeah, totally different. And as far as the analog uh, input circuitry goes, um, you won't find like the same uh, differential capability that you'll get on the analog discovery. So that's a bit of, that was actually quite nice. Um, so, but this is a low performance. You wouldn't expect it single-ended. Uh, we've got a um, uh, microchip uh, 10 megahertz op amp on here. There's one of those for each channel. There's another one on the bottom there. And uh, they've just got various uh, gain ranges with these uh, muxes here. And here's the schematic. You can work it out for yourself. And there's various uh, gain ranges that they've uh, put into this thing. So, yeah, it can go from a reasonable, uh, I think, a plus minus 20 volt range, is it? Uh, right down to a relatively low one. So that's all right. No worries. You don't really need on a portable thing like this. 20 volts is plenty. Then you've got the old-fashioned LMV324 uh, in there, and uh, that just goes, um, the analog, uh, the ADC, the 10-bit, uh, sorry, the 12-bit 2 megahertz ADC um, is built into the PIC32 uh, there. So, um, like, there's not much else. Uh, and we've got an FT232, uh, of course, classic for your... Uh, uh, USB um, interface. It looks like we have uh, some power supply stuff up there. 3.3 volt low dropout reg. And well, there's not much else. A couple of switches here. What is BTNP and BTNR? Well, don't get it. As for the uh, function generator, uh, the DAC for that is not built into the PIC32. They're actually, here's the schematic, they're actually using an R2R ladder network to actually do that. That's a it's a little bit how you're doing. I mean, maybe they were right. Is there, are there any pick 32s with a DAC? Oh, and their schematic actually says uh, plus minus five volt output on both of those uh, dual channel uh, power supplies. So I, I don't know. Their marketing specs are a bit out there. Anyway, the hardware is very basic, um, pretty much uh, what you'd expect apart from the uh, R2R ladder DAC there, which is a bit surprising, but it all comes down to, with this sort of thing, comes down to the software. So let's have a look at how you can connect. Um, you can connect either via the Wi-Fi or USB, I believe. Um, why? I? It'd be nice if it was backward compatible with the Waveforms software, but they've got this new software, presumably because they've got entirely new uh, PIC32 in here, so it has to be its own product. That's a, it's a bit of a shame. I don't know why they couldn't have taken the analog discovery and got the price point of that one down a bit more by just using a different, uh, you know, converter. Um, a chip, you know, I think they used like, a, yeah, they used a, a big 14-bit uh, expensive one on the uh, 100 meg samples per second 14 bit in the analog discovery. Why you wouldn't reuse all that, you know, good software that they'd already written and just get the price point down for this one and just whack on the Wi-Fi? I don't know, strange. All right, so let's actually plug this thing in and give it a bell, shall we? Um, on the product page here, it's actually, uh, of course, you can order the thing, but uh, it's actually quite disappointing. Yes, they have a PDF schematic and a data sheet, but uh, that's about all she wrote. For all the good stuff, you've actually got to go to the resource center down here and you go, aha, check it out. We've actually got everything. Look, it's got Fritz in parts, um, the schematic rev f in PDF, uh, the schematic change log. Looks like it may not have... The original uh, schematic file, I'm not sure that could be in the GitHub uh, repro, uh, but look, it's got a Thingiverse, uh, 3D printable case, the acrylic case, zip files, presumably the mechanical CAD package, whatever they use, all sorts of stuff. It's fantastic. Um, and m more than that, look at all the tutorials, getting started with the Open Scope MZ, the setup and all sorts of jazz, update the firmware, calibration, Wi-Fi setup, which we'll try out. 
all sorts of stuff. So there you go, we can go into the getting started, but basically what we want is the setup here. So we'll go into the setup and basically uh, if you want to run this on Windows or Mac or Linux, you've got to download this DigiLint agent, which I have downloaded, and it sits in the bottom corner down here. And whoop, there it is, DigiLint agent. Um, and as I said, uh, the waveforms live, it looks like it's only available online because if you go in here and you launch waveforms live, it simply takes you to a tab where you can add your device. Okay, well, great, but yeah, I much prefer a standalone program because if the internet is dead, the interwebs is down, then your product is useless. All right, let's see if this thing works. Let's plug it in. I've installed my DigiLent agent. Plug it into the USB, we'll do the Wi-Fi later. I heard a beep, and uh, I guess Windows, I think it believe, I believe it's a serial port. Anyway, add a device, agent, local host, I believe that's what we do, and we just go plus, connect into, it's only one com three, so that's gotta be it, because uh, I don't think I'd ordinarily have a com. So I guess open, it's a bit clunky. Retry emulator firmware update required. Now we take into the update firmware wizard. That's nice that it kind of. Uh, okay, so out of the box, where, what? Up to current firmware. Point. Oh wow, we're way behind, way behind. All right, we'll update that. Let's see if the firmware transfer in the hex file. It's all pretty seamless at the moment. Yeah, there we go. Lights are flashing. Everything's hunky dory. Reconnecting. Of course, it's got to reboot the firmware. Come on, you can do it. Done. Uncal your device is uncal. You'll be now taken to the calibration wizard. Oh, well, I guess it's nice that it takes you through a wizard like this. Connect. Oh, with a what? I've got to. Why do I have to calibrate this thing? I mean, what are we actually calibrating? Like the R2R ladder network or something? I don't get it. Hang on. All right, so I've got to connect the solid red wire to the solid orange, solid blue to solid white. Of course, they don't include any like little um, jumper pins or anything in the kit. All you get is the uh, the females. You don't get any male pins, so I had to get those and uh, ready to calibrate. So this must be calibrating the, uh, the DC, the two DC power supplies. So anyway, let's go, let's begin. And I don't know, it like it would have been much easier if you surely they could have designed it without needing calibration. Anyway, should take about 30 seconds. Come on, you can do it. That's a long time for a may, it's probably like stepping it all the way through or something like that. Would have been nice if it told you what it was actually doing um, and why it has to do it. Like, hey, it's important that we calibrate. Sorry for the inconvenience, but it's important that we calibrate the bloom. Here we go, source calibrated ideal for calibrated A. These are our percentage difference. Okay, so there we go. Okay, maybe they're just calibrating out a little bit of error there just to get better. Uh, specs, which is all hunky-dory, presumably all reference back, because I don't, I'm not sure if there was an external voltage reference chip on here, but they might be using the one built into the uh, PIC32 ADC. Um, done. I guess I can save that for as being applied to the instrument, but we're lost when powered down. What? What? Are they seriously telling me that they have to reload this calibration for every time you power this up? No way. That's an epic fail if that's the case. That's just ridiculous. I got a storage location, flash. Okay, flash. So, so I've got to save it to the. I'm saving it to the built-in flash on there. And then, right, done. Okay. Surely it won't require me to redo that. Hmm. Anyway, there you go. Okay, we can now set up Wi-Fi and all that sort of stuff, which we'll uh, do later. I presumably can't set up the Wi-Fi, of course, without plugging in the USB. Um, calibration is done. It's stored in flash, surely. It can't be serious. Anyway, done. Alright, there you go. Host name, open scope. Can we just open it? Connect in. Yay! That's what we want. 
there you go millivolts 500 millivolts per division thank you very much and uh trigger in the middle beautiful all right wave gen um it's not an arbitrary waveform gen which i believe the uh, uh analog discovery was so it's just a basic function gen but you can go up to looks like three volts peak to peak is the highest you can go that's okay you know for a device like this that's fine you can offset in 100 millivolts steps up to plus minus one and a half so that's pretty groovy it's good to have the ability to dc offset um and the frequency is uh can we i mean presumably we can just type in 100 if we just type in 100 can we no kill it like set wave gen free like 40 kilohertz what 100 like i can't press enter and like 100k can i just press like no it would like it'd be nice if i could just type in 100k and then press enter um so what i can only go up in steps i can't do any finer steps that's nuts and there we go we turned it off and on everything's on by default so the wave gen's on by default um is it is that i assume that switches off the output hmm anyway let me see if i can hook uh the function gen up to the scope and see what's what now one of the uh problems here is while all the wires are color coded okay great um you know you're out in the field using this thing and you just want to hook it up um you've got to remember what colors are what i mean there's no labels on there you know this sort of price bracket i guess you wouldn't expect um individually labeled but yeah you've got to know which one's what or you've got to label them yourself so yeah that's not terrific right and if we scroll down here they've got a pinout printout but this is basically useless it's not color coded it doesn't really explain anything what any of these things do so that's i don't even know why they bother having that but luckily down here they have this nice uh color coded pinout anyway we've got a um we've got the grounds here the analog inputs um oscilloscope one uh, oh, arbitrary waveform gen. It is saying arbitrary. So uh, we didn't see any arbitrary capability. Maybe it is uh, deeper inside there. Trigger and uh, trigger out, which is nice. Trigger external stuff. And then your uh, uh, eight data. Well, eight, seven, I guess. Maybe the trigger in can be used. Oh, no, D09. Okay, D1 to D10. And then they've just got, looks like, you know, just dedicated pins on the micro. It, like... That's a little bit confusing to people who don't know um, the microcontroller uh, labeling and stuff like that. But they're just the microcontroller pins. Um, would have been nicer to extract that outer layer, but just a small thing. Right, so let's have a look here. I've got my ARB Gen output yellow connected to channel 1 input. Over here we've got our trigger settings. Uh, we want channel 1 trigger, line level, meh, 500 millivolts, whatever um and oscilloscope channel one oscilloscope channel two which we can just switch well yeah off so we've got it doesn't switch the grid off it just switches the waveform off okay no worries uh we've got 500 millivolts per division so if we go like that yep no worries plus minus 25 and we go down to oh two millivolts per division that's all right anyway let's let's give that a little run and see oh single okay where's the uh auto trigger we're getting zippity doo da. oh there we go we're in like flynn all right we've got to turn our uh see i don't like that negative like that that's just ah it's just wrong it's just wrong and the horizontal here it is there we go so let's can we go single shot it just takes forever run where's our trigger point can i like i can't right click on here i can drag across okay that's cool can't do anything with the uh right button so but we can and yeah we can drag that window across there okay the distortion here we're seeing is of course uh sample uh, distortion so abort geez all right level well let's go down to zero we want to trigger on zero 
and run. Right? Why is it not? Okay, if you zoom in far enough, you actually get to see the um, sample points. It's kind of nice. And you zoom out, it gets rid of them, of course, just to avoid clutter. That's groovy. We're armed. Force trigger. There we go. No, I've switched my... <laughs> no wonder I've switched my oscillator off. It's on now. Sorry. It's... Yeah, when it's blue, it's on, and you can't change stuff while it's on. That's a bit annoying. Okay, so let's single... There we go. Now we're talking. All right. That kind of makes sense. And if we... Whoa. Whoa. Look at all that sample distortion. Wow. What's going on there? Did that... Like, what? It's just armed and re-trigger. Wow. Oi, there it is again. Jeez, that's a problem, isn't it? Wow. That's glitchy as. That's ridiculous. You can't have that. That is so buggy. Nah, that's, that's an epic fail. Right there. Will we get the sample distortion if we zoom right in like that? Or it, yeah, yeah, you can see it in the top window. I like, you know, they have the, the typical magnified window up the top. That's a bit. Look, the amplitude was jumped. Look, and that sample distortion. So we're not seeing that unless we go right out. Maybe we'll get it again. But geez, that's yeah. Look at that. That's ridiculous. It's terrible, Muriel. So why the uh, trigger level here doesn't have? Oh God horrible why it doesn't like have the ability to go plus minus on the trigger level and like you have to actually type that in so i don't know what's going on there anyway i set my trigger level to two volts and it's still triggering why is it still triggering single shot idle okay so it must have some sort of uh auto uh auto sample there because then if I change that down to one volt it should I've got to redo single do I no look I'm going trigger level one volt it should be it should trigger at that point there at that one point I like the little uh, um, info there that comes up with the voltage and the time relative to the zero point um, how, how do you get back to zero how do you reset the horizontal back to zero center view on trigger ha there we go easy peasy lemon squeezy okay so it's triggering on zero volts 0.5 500 millivolts it's triggering on 500 yeah it's going to make an idiot out of me i don't know why it wasn't triggering before and then if we go 1.5 it should still trigger just yep but if we go 1.6, it shouldn't trigger. It should just sit there arming. Yep, so that's all good. All right. No wackers. Got to abort that. Run it. Armed. No, there is no auto. So that's it. Okay. It's all pretty rudimentary. Not happy that you can't adjust the wave gen in uh, real time without switching it off. I mean, that's just it's an annoying limitation. It's not a showstopper, but... Geez, it would have been nice to... Because if I run that, right, now it's not doing anything until I switch the wave gen on. And I can't modify anything. I've got to stop it. Triangle, please. And switch it on. Go. There we go. Square wave, please, sir. Oh, that's sample corruption. Where? How do you get sample corruption like that? That's remarkable. Hang on. We haven't turned on the wave. <laughs> it's updating. It's updating, but we haven't turned on the wave gen. What the? And now it's stopped. What? It's like it's inverse. What? What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, because I just offsetted my... <laughs> so the offset works, but gee. Jeez, what's going on? Wow. This is... No. No. It's pretty clunky. Not the least bit impressed. And the logic analyzer, well, what can we do here? Jeez, I'm on a full HD screen here, like a, you know, 1920 by 1080, and it can't fit all the stuff in there. I've got to do like a little slider. Well, okay, granted, if I got rid of my um, 
uh, tab bar up like my uh, thing up there or I went to full screen it'd probably you know I wouldn't have to do that but yeah okay but oh, the data corruption Wow yeah and it shows you the sample rate number of samples like let's go 100 samples there we go look at that okay so that works it's just I don't know the UI is just a bit clunky not impressed ah bow plot in okay now we're talking yep let's oh got to calibrate okay got to calibrate it first solid orange to solid yellow yep calibrate so we've got to calibrate the bode plot and we're up there we go frequency one hertz okay took a bit oh and there's pretty big steps there in the end goes up to one megahertz okay start back to your circuit and click start well my circuit is <laughs> connected directly so let's see the direct response and of course it's scaled it that looks really bad but it's not look at the um, it's actually really quite good look at the amplitude the DB amplitude over here it's just auto scaling right in so it looks bad but uh, look I can't like right like I can't click on that like I can't control shift use my scroll wheel anything anyway that is like that trust me that's flat if I was able to zoom out on the amplitude the Y on the Y steps I can't even adjust export chart calibrate auto scale yeah well we can auto scale I can't even adjust the amplitude over here how do I do that doesn't seem to be there that's crazy anyway because it's so minute like 0.005 uh, DB there is like it, it's nothing right so that's ruler flat if you had that set to like a you know a 60 DB scale or something like that um, that'd be flat as attack over the frequency range so yeah if we put an RC filter in there we'd see the response okay whoop de doo uh, the number of steps okay we can do a hundred and there we go it's gonna take a bit longer but that's kinda cool but very primitive though um yeah not terrific but you know usable I guess you know for education stuff although I still think that the uh, analog discovery is a better educational tool than this one whoa data corruption <laughs> why is it it's gone wow that is incredible <laughs> Tend to another one no, I'm not touching I don't think I'm touching it so maybe that has something to do with the sample calibration problems that we had before anyway not really impressed by this how do I stop I, I can't stop it I can't stop it once started oh dear oh dear I'll get back to you right I'm not sure if that locked up or just took forever but I just had to like go up here to the uh, URL and just reload the damn thing and that worked what I do like is that um, show device pinout is here so that's quite nice you can pop that up in the software someone there was thinking so what else have we got reset device and reinitialize um, like but there's no multimeter thing like you know it's you could have had like multimeter functionality maybe that's on the Windows, uh, the, sorry, like the, the phone version. I don't know. Um, we can't click on the math thing down there anyway. Oh, you know, not hugely impressed. Let's go over here. Settings, zoom on center. Oh, okay. Mouse wheel, zoom on mouse, control mouse wheel. Okay, gives you the hotkeys. Okay, there you go. Change volts per division, vertical pan, shift plus click and drag okay shift plus click and drag there we go that's just moving that but that's not uh, very good that doesn't highlight area and zoom but we don't zoom on mouse wheel control mouse wheel okay and I'm just uh, playing around with the uh, simulated version of this so you can actually try out the software uh, yourself you just uh, choose the simulated version and if I actually uh, hold down the shift key I figured out how to do the vertical there so hold down shift and use your uh, scroll wheel and then I can just highlight the one I want and then drag that up and down and then you can of course drag your 
trigger point here. So that's all okay, you know, all your stuff is not too bad, but the waveform generator is like really pretty basic. I mean, I can't find a way to, is there a way to step that in smaller increments? I just, you know, 501, nah, bummer. And I can just hold down control and of course zoom that in and out, that's all right. And the uh, mass functions here, we've got, you know, frequency period, like nothing fancy, like you can't uh, like add in equations or uh, do any cool stuff like that. It's just, you know, <laughs> it's pretty basic, like you can't even gate, you can't even like highlight a section and then operate um, on that. It's just the entire memory or waveform. I'm not sure if that's over the memory range or in, over the entire uh, memory range or the waveform window range. I presume it's uh, window based. Whoops. And I was actually going to go back in. I'm uh, back at the office now. I don't have access to the unit, so I'm running the simulator. And uh, it the bode plot can't work again because of I don't have new firmware. <laughs> I don't even have the hardware attached. Dull. Oh, anyway, it does have um, FFT uh, capability. It looks pretty rudimentary. Um, nothing to write home about there at all. It's like 600 hertz. There you go. What? Oh, because I didn't change my... There we go. It was on 600. Yep. So it's Johnny on the spot, but like... Um, yeah, okay. Rudimentary stuff. And it's got a data logger as well, but I can't check that now because... I don't correct firmware on my simulated version <laughs> oh dear all right let's give the uh, analyzer a try down here i've turned on channel one channel two i've hooked up an i squared c uh signal and i've uh, just gone force like that because i haven't figured out how to trigger from the i mean i'm triggering from the logic analyzer but like where's the like sort like what source what channel what like i don't get it anyway like here's our two signals a1 a2 i'm not sure if you oh yeah can we expect no we can move them but uh we can't can we expand them uh anyway we can hold down control and we can zoom in like that that's all right so let's force i don't like this like why does the green oh hang on yeah, why does the green line go down like that in the middle? I don't like that at all. That's quite disturbing. So anyway, there we go. We've got our I squared C, but uh, like there's no protocol analysis or anything by the looks of it. We've C, and it's like like no auto timing pops up and things like that. You know, I, I know this is early stage for the software and stuff like that, but it would have been nice to see. It's really pretty rudimentary. Um, you know, maybe it's good enough to see a signal, but I can't even see a way to trigger from the, uh, like, oh, hang on. If I turn off my, what if I turn off my scope? Here we go. Okay, so we're, we're now free running. There we go. Why that line is still down, the, that's our center, is it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like yet yeah, negative and positive, so that's our set. It can't even go back to the center. It can't even stay there. Wow, look, it's jumping back. That's terrible, Muriel. Um, all right, so <laughs> we're like, but how do we trigger from it? Source, logic analyzer, but how do you choose? Well, I went to the uh, trigger section here, and it says any oscilloscope or logic analyzer channel, but... If I change the trigger source to logic analyzer, I have more configuration options. Each channel in the logic analyzer can be set to a rising edge, uh -huh. a falling edge. I had edge. to watch the video. Stop. Ah, that, sorry. That's when the configure comes up and you can choose your channel. Okay. Excellent. And a trigger mask. Okay, so it's got rudimentary stuff. So rising edge of the, is uh, the first channel, our clock or whatever. All right, let's see if we can uh, connect to the Wi-Fi, shall we? Wi-Fi status disconnected. Why? I want to connect. I've already set up my password uh, for my SSID, which is uh, the NSA, because we want to hack into the NSA's Wi-Fi. And um, I, it's not there. RTFM again. Okay, it looks like we have to might have to re-enumerate up here. Ta-da! 
There we go. 192.168.1.129. And we don't want to save that. All right. I think we're in like Flynn now. Done. We are Wi-Fi connected. Okay. Now we should be able to add a device. Networked. Ah. I forgot what the IP was. <laughs> Oh, 129. Okay. Are we in like Flynn? Connected and connect to the device and navigate to the instrumentation. Connect in. Ah, we're in. We're in. Analyzer. Yes. Run. Force. Oh, where's our stuff? Forcing an unlikely due to unarmed trigger. Oh, come on. I don't like this. I like where's my analyzer gone? Like it hasn't even popped up here with the channels. I've got analyzer, that's the digital IO. Um I'm sure that works a treat, but I've got I'm not sure how I got my channels up there before. And it's and by the way, I don't particularly like how it's overlaid on the wave for on the um uh, oscilloscope screen. I mean, like uh, it's great if you're doing mixed signal analysis, of course, a logic analyzer stuff and the analog stuff as well at the same time. I mean, you can time correlate everything. That's fantastic. But uh, if you just want to run the digital analyzer, then you should just be able to run the digital analyzer. No, it's almost as if it hasn't connected. All right, well, I downloaded and installed the waveform live. Uh, I was like number 100, to <laughs> like 101 or something. Um, and sure enough, um, I can connect uh, to it and connect into device, bingo. But uh, I cannot get this thing to actually run and do anything. I can't force it. I can't get a waveform up. I don't know what the deal is. I just cannot turn on the wave gem because the logic analyzer is running. So if you had uh, dreams of uh, being able to use the logic analyzer with the wave gen and the oscilloscope all at once, it looks like it can't really do that. All right, I got it. I had to actually repower the um, open scope itself and wait a minute for it all to initialize again. I reconnected and bingo, I've got a uh, bleh. Yeah, single shot. There we go. So yeah, I think I'm back. I think I'm back in business. There you go. Channel one, channel two for your analyzer. Let's, can we actually try and trigger now? Maybe? Pretty please? cherry on top um, it's really frustrating on a phone screen it's not really I don't know how to get don't know if you can get rid of this panel it doesn't look like you can get the waveform full screen of course better on a tablet um, or a phablet or one of those stupid newfangled things um, but yeah on a phone it's pretty cramped but you know it's it, like it's gonna work there we go oh, it's tiny tot like yeah we can zoom that way okay that's <laughs> just Oh my goodness. Force. Uh, let's run. Force. Force. How can I, like, zoom in those waveforms? Anyway, you've got, like, cursors down here and stuff like that. Uh, not particularly fast. Logic Analyzer 1. Logic Analyzer 1. Like, yeah, type, time, track, voltage. You know, there we go. We can track stuff, but... Oh, is it stopped? Anyway, it kind of works, but absolutely useless on a phone. Useless as tits on a bull. I can't read that at all. I can't see any data on that whatsoever. And if I try and, like, pinch and, like, I can't, can't do anything. I can move back and forth. And once again, that, that trigger thing, like, that's not even the center of that waveform view. And there's no, like, uh, trigger delay that I can actually set for this logic analyzer to allow me to, like, it's just triggering on that positive edge. Um, so it's not like I can, you know, wait for a new packet or something like that to do that. Um, so that's, you know, it's pretty useless. I like how the, look, look at this waveform view down here is actually um, auto-scaled and zoomed in to show you the data, whereas this one over here is uh, full screen. If we go like that, should now match. Kind of like that. So that's pretty jazzy. There's significant offset there. There's a 40 millivolt offset. Wow. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, 40 millivolt offset. That's a lot. Is that inherent in the uh, channel? I thought we calibrated this thing. Uh, anyway, 
So that's not terrific, but yeah, I like how that auto zooms in vertically. That's really quite nice. Um, but yeah, there's no uh, trigger hold off or anything like that. Uh, trigger delay to allow me to, um, you know, reliably uh, trigger on a packet after a dead space or anything like that. Nothing basic, and there looks to be no uh, decoders in it. And the interface for the phone is exactly the same as the one you get on the web, which is kind of... Uh, understandable. So yeah, it's just exactly the same as the uh, Windows version. I don't know what else to tell you there. It's It kind of sort of does the job if you want to squint at it, but pretty useless for logic analyzer on a phone. So I think I'll uh, call it quits there. I've pretty much seen enough. So the OpenScope MZ, what is it, uh, 79 US dollars or something like that? I mean, it's reasonable value if it suits your purposes, but yeah, it's got a few quirks and the software's missing. It does have uh, the full open source in the GitHub. I haven't really uh, checked it out, but it all uh, seems to be there. But you, I, I don't kind of get it when they had the excellent um, analog discovery and the more mature uh, software involved in that. I don't know why they couldn't have just cost cut this down to a cheaper version and utilize that software. Well, I probably know the reason actually is because this is all closed source. This is not uh, open source um, uh, at all. Either the software I don't think is open source or the uh, FPGA and uh, protocol and all the stuff inside of here. Whereas this is fully open source. Presumably you can get the uh, firmware for the PIC and everything and the, and the software and the whole works. Um, here's a clip uh, talking about what it's written in. I don't know. It might as well be written in Klingon. I'm fluent in JavaScript as well as Klingon. Our application software is called Waveforms Live, and it's developed using common web frameworks like Ionic 2 and Angular 2. Most of our code is written in TypeScript and JavaScript and will be available on GitHub. When running Waveforms Live in the browser, you can connect to the OpenScope via USB or with Wi-Fi. If you connect with Wi-Fi, you can actually load Waveforms Live from the OpenScope itself. So yeah, I don't see that the open source nature of this adds a lot. I mean, you know, 99 plus percent of people are not going to care, or not going to, well, <laughs> utilize the open source. You know, it's it's nice, warm, fuzzy uh, marketing thing, and it's great. I, you know, I fully support, like, open source, fantastic. But ultimately, at the end of the day, people are just going to buy this and use it with the off-the-shelf software. But it does mean people can uh, write their own software and do all that sort of uh, stuff. I don't know. I just would have liked to see the cut down, cut down price version of this, even if it was closed source, I think could be more uh, competitive and utilize all the um, software, the more mature software that they've got uh, written for this thing and maybe add on like, but the, of course this one's got the Wi-Fi. Um, it does ultimately work, but yeah, like not very good on a phone. They haven't optimized the interface for a phone. It'll work fine on a tablet, I'm sure. You know, if you had an eight or a 10 inch tablet and you know, full HD uh, screen and just work like your desktop. But yeah, I don't know. I can't see a huge market for this one, I mean, this one's absolutely killing it in the um, educational uh, space and even in the hobbyist market. Even like this is like two hundred and seventy dollars, I think. I don't think they have like the. Um, I don't even think they have like the student discount for this anymore. Um, don't quote me on that, but uh, yeah. Anyway, this one is a bit pricey, but it's a really quite a much nicer tool than this open source one. But it is only seventy nine bucks, so I don't know. Make your own evaluation on that, but I I find it hard to think that this is going to get a big market. It just needs more uh, mature uh, software. And also, you know, like it doesn't have the nice uh, differential input that this one had and other stuff. And you've got to dick around a bit with the calibration on here, which sort of, you know, took the uh, uh, excitement off a bit for this thing. And they don't, oh, well, I guess you could design a matching interface just like uh, DigiLint. Um, you could get this, which just plugs in there, and then you could get your standard B and C attachments. Nothing stopping you uh, doing that for something like this. So yeah, can't really give that one a thumbs up at this stage. It might, you know, I what are the competing ones with uh, like an interface like this, which does it all with a Wi-Fi interface? I'm offhand, I'm not uh, sure. So really, it would uh, depend on the competition. This is the only thing out there in this particular niche uh, space for that sort of thing, then, well, you know, it, it might be valuable uh, to you. So it'd be interesting to compare with others on the market. But yeah, it, it needs a bit more maturity, I think, the open scope. It's getting there. There's some nice aspects to it I like, but there's just too many little fiddly 
negative things. Anyway, hope you found that useful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.